Hi everyone, Dave Thomas here, and today I am building the Razor tube finned model rocket. This is produced by Custom Rocketry. This model goes together really quickly. Um, all the, the parts are pre colored, so you don't have to worry about painting it, although you can if you like. And it, since it uses tube fins, you don't have to worry about treating balsa wood and things like this. So let's go through this quickly. Alright, um, we've got decals here, the main body tube, engine mount tube, elastic shock cord, um, and then there are six of these little tube fin tubes. Nose cone, parachute, and then a small parts bag here that has the engine block, centering rings, nose cone base, engine clip, and launch lug. So compare that to the list here. Looks like we have everyone. Everyone. Every, everything. I'm anthropomorphizing my rockets now. Um, I'll clear this away and we will get started. To assemble the motor mount, we'll need three, these parts, the motor mount tube, two centering rings, the engine clip, and engine block or thrust ring. And the tube here is pre-slotted, so they've already cut a little slot in here for the engine hook. And so the um, forward part of the engine hook just pops into there. Okay, and then go ahead and take your ruler and measure half an inch from each end of the tube. And just make a little mark there. These will be our guides for the centering ring. So one here, and then on the other end, so my hands I can get in the way of this. Okay, right there. All right, and what's going to happen here is that the two centering rings will align with those marks that we just made. And here I've not put any glue into place. Okay, it's a little tight. There we go. Just dry fitting everything here. Okay, and then our thrust ring will be mounted on the top here and it will rest against the top of the engine clip. Okay. So if all of that stuff is fitting together, then what we'll do here, um, I'm going to do one other thing to this. On the aft engine ring, I'm just going to cut a partial slot here. Um, and the reason for that is to let the engine clip travel a little bit back and forth and this will make uh, changing the motors out a little bit easier. Okay, You don't have to do this but your engine clip will be stiffer without this. And you don't want to go too far where the engine clip will just kind of dangle around in there. Okay, so just a little bit there. I'm, I've only gone down maybe a millimeter, millimeter or two Okay, I'm going to slide that back on with my slot. I'm going to turn this around. It's got some. There we go. Okay, so my slot is right there, and when this is pushed up to its mark, 
This just gives me a little bit more play there. Right. So we're ready for some glue. And you can use your finger, you can use your uh, glue bottle itself. Uh, I'm going to use wood glue on this. You can also use white glue without any problem. And now, the first thing I'm going to do is just move this back. Okay, so that I'm right before my line there at one centimeter, or half an inch, I guess it was. All right, I'm just going to put a ring of glue around here. Now I'm going to push that up until I get back to my line there. And I'll simply smooth this around into a fillet. All right, and then on the back side, I'm going to do the same thing as well here. So find my mark once more. There's my mark. All right, so I'm just going to push this over that. Right, try to avoid hitting the engine clip. And if you do get a little glue on there, it's not a big deal. It'll eventually flake off. Okay, and then once more, I'm going to move that until I get to my line once more. And again, I'm going to just smooth that around into a fillet. All right, if you got anything on the top surface of the rings there, just go ahead and wipe that off. Okay. And if you like, you can also put another fillet on the inside of each of these rings. That will make it really strong. Some more, just go ahead and smooth those around. Good idea to have some tissue or paper towels handy to wipe the glue off your fingers. Okay, and then for the thrust ring here, I'm going to put some glue just inside the forward end. I don't want a whole lot here because I don't want to push a bunch of glue down inside beyond the engine clip there. So just a small film, thin film. Okay, and I'll we'll put that on. And this is going to want to tilt a little bit, so make sure you keep it even. And then if you want to make sure of some added strength here, you can just put some glue around the outside edge. Smooth that around a bit. Okay, uh, and then we can just let this dry for five to ten minutes and then we'll insert it into the body tube. My motor mount is now dry enough that I can handle it without worrying about any of the rings slipping. And so next we're going to prepare the body tube and we need to put a ring of glue about an inch or so up inside of it. Uh, I'm going to break this down actually into two parts. So, if we take the motor mount here, um, what they're doing is putting glue in at about this point, right around right here, um, and then shoving this through the glue. But really, the only part being glued is still this forward ring. Um, the aft ring here is not getting any glue using this method. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to measure about where that should go and come down just a little bit. Okay, and I'm using my thumb here as a guide. Now I'm going to insert this without touching the sides until I hit my thumbnail there. And then I'm going to wrap this around and just put glue around the inside there. Okay, check and make sure there's enough. And this can get a little bit tight, but now I'm going to put the, the motor mount in, but not all the way. I'm going to leave most of it hanging out here. And I'm going to get some more glue. 
and I'll put it right on the inside edge. Now I'll clean off that stuff that just got on the tube there. But this way, both engine rings will be in contact with glue and will be attached to the interior of the body tube. Okay, now this next part you want to do in one fluid motion here. So we're going to push this in all the way until it is flush, like that. Okay, and you can wipe off any of the glue that got up on there. All right, and then I'm going to let this dry for another 10 minutes or so. Now that my motor mount glue has dried, we're going to glue on the tube fins. And the way the instructions show is you simply put a bead of glue down the length here, and then you'll glue that on with the two bases flush like this. Okay, and you can do that. <clears throat> what I recommend is to add a step in there, and what I'm going to do here is just using some fine sandpaper, I'm going to roughen up the finish here in a line down the length before I glue it. Okay, and then I'm also going to do the same thing here on the body tube. And I'm just going to mark this a little bit inside the length of one of the fins. That way we won't see the mark here once it's done. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to drag this down to roughen up that finish a little bit. All right, now just take your wood glue or white glue and just put a bead down along your sanded line there. Okay, now you don't want this to be sloppy, but you can be a little bit generous here because you're not going to be able to get in and do fillets like you would on a typical model rocket build. All right, and I'm just going to let this lay side by side here while the glue dries. After it's dried for um, at least five minutes, uh, at least ten if you're using white glue, then repeat this process as we go around. Now if you want to, um, you can add a fillet in here before you do the next tube fin. Um, but I would wait for the glue to dry. If you're in a hurry here, just glue them all the way around. Um, and the other thing you can do is not only glue to the, the body tube, but look at where it hits on the adjacent tube fin there and add some glue to that as well. That will strengthen this up even though you won't, it's difficult to get um, the uh, fillets all the way down and all the way around this thing. So I will do the rest of these in rapid succession here. And with that, I will let all these tube fins dry for 10-20 minutes here, and then we'll come back and put on the shock cord. Now that all of the tube fins are attached, we need to attach the launch lug. And this can go anywhere that's in between two of the tube fins, and should be three inches from the aft end of the rocket. 
Okay, so if we put this on here, all right, it's going to be easier if we go from the tube. So we'll actually just measure one of these. So one of the tube fins is two inches. So we'll just go one more inch from there. I'm just going to put a little tiny mark right here. Okay, and like I did with the fins, I'm going to roughen up the surface a little bit on this just to give it a little bit better adhesion. Now this I want to do really, really finely because I don't want to leave any marks on either side. So just a little bit here. Now I'm not going to go the whole uh, distance of the launch lug again just to make sure that I don't take off color where it's going to show. Now the launch lug itself, I can go ahead and do a full length sanding there. And then I will take my wood glue okay, you get a nice even bead there. that right on my mark. Okay, now I'm going to sight down and make sure that it is in line both with the main uh, body tube but also it needs to be in line with the gap between two of the tube fins there. Okay, and that looks like it should do it. So I'm going to let this dry for a few minutes. My next step is to cut out the shock cord mount here and make sure that it's not anything important that we're going to cut out. We've already done these steps. If you don't want to cut up your instructions, simply take a photocopy and cut that. Alright, using either scissors or your hobby knife. Just cut this out along the line. There we go. And that will take the actual shock cord here. Okay, we've got a little bit of frayed material there. I'm just going to snip that off so it doesn't get in the way later. And probably on the first ejection charge, this will all melt and kind of seal itself. All right, now what we're going to do is move this around this way. And we're just going to run a bead of glue down it. And you want to be fairly heavy with this because we want to eventually have this thing completely glued together. And what I'm going to do here is put the elastic kind of diagonally as it goes from the two section to the one section. And this is a fairly wide shock cord, so we want to have a wide angle on that. What this is going to do is make it so when this folds over, um, it will lay beside itself instead of directly on itself. And that will help prevent things getting stuck during ejection recovery. Now I'm simply going to fold down the one into the two. All right, and we want a little bit of glue to squeeze out there. That means it's completely through that section. Uh, I'm actually going to give this a little more glue. And now I'm going to fold the two over to the three. All right, and again, I'm getting this right beside it. So you pull this over once you can feel where it's going to go. And a little glue on my mat there, not a big deal. Okay, and now what I'm doing is I'm imparting a curve to this. So if you look at it edge on, it's rounded now. And this will help 
uh, attach it to the inside of the body tube. And now I'm going to give this another fairly generous dollop of glue here. Okay, and let's smear that all over. And again, the idea here is to make this essentially one big piece of paper and laminate glue so that when it dries, there won't be any air gaps in it. Now we're going to take the body tube and I'm gently just going to slide this in, trying not to get glue on the sides yet. And this needs to go down at least an inch and a half. Um, I prefer to get them down as far as you possibly can. All right, I'm going to take my finger and just shove this down as far as I can. So it needs to be at least an inch and a half so it doesn't impact the um, nose cone. All right, and now I'm pressing against the inside of the tube while holding the outside here to get as flat of a mount as I can. Right, so we look down in there. Let's see if you can see it. You can just see it there. Okay, so it's down far enough that the um, base of the nose cone will not get pinched against that. Now, to assemble the nose cone, we need to use either plastic model cement or you can use super glue here. I'm going to use the super glue just because I have it handy. Um, and one of the things you can do here to help things hold a bit better is again take a little bit of fine sandpaper and just lightly roughen the edge here on the inside of the nose cone. Uh, this is especially true with the super glue. The plastic cement, you really don't need to do this with. This, again, this is going to give it some little tiny ridges to help it grip. And you can do the same thing here by just doing a little bit on the interior of the base, or be, I guess the exterior. This will contact the interior of the nose cone. I'm simply going to put a thin bead of super glue around this. Uh, I'm using a thick type super glue. You can use the regular type as well. Okay, and I'm just going to pop this in and then I'm going to kind of give it a twist back and forth here. Um, do this with the model cement as well, and that's just going to make it seat better and spread the glue throughout. All right, and then once again, we can wait a few minutes for this to dry. While the shock cord is drying, we can assemble the parachute. And this is something I don't see too much in rocket kits anymore, is, is a non-already assembled parachute. So Estes and Rocketarium both come with pre-assembled parachutes nowadays. Okay, so here, what we're going to do is first cut out the parachute itself. Okay, so it's in its own wrapper here. And I'm going to carefully cut this away. It looks like it's just supposed to fold open, but it's not wanting to. Okay, so just remove the parachute from the wrapper here. There we go.
and I just cut out the parachute along the dotted lines here. You can use scissors or you can use a, a ruler and a hobby knife. Once you've got this remaining plastic off, don't throw it away quite yet because it has the instructions on. Okay, now, first thing we need to do after cutting it out then is to take the shroud line material here and carefully unravel it. And now we're going to fold this into three equal pieces. And so what I'll do here is get a, a roughly a third here. So here's one end that I've got a hold of. I've got a loop that I'm hoping is about a third of the total length long. Okay, and then passing through here on my other hand, I've got the rest of it. And so now what I can do, and quit dropping it. is I'll pull on the end here of the loop that is going to pull up the rest of the shroud line. This is actually a pretty long shroud line. Alright, so now I'm going to come down to where the other end is. Alright, I'm mostly there. And so at this point what you can do is just cut the excess here. I'm going to cut right into the loop. All right, that little bit of excess. So now those, that end is all the same length. Now pull all three together here. All right, always keeping tension on one side or the other so I don't change my length. And then now I can just cut through this loop. And they're all the same. Way. Okay, now you've got a choice. Okay, so the original instructions here have us taking an end. And you kind of make a little J hook here and push, put that onto the parachute. And then you take a self-adhesive disc and press it on over that to hold it in place. The new instructions um, have a disc that has a little hole in it here. And so you put the disc on first, punch the hole through with a pencil, and then tie it on here. Well, I discovered why they went to the alternative method of attachment here. Uh, with the synthetic string that they're using, it doesn't stick well to the tabs. So I'm going to go ahead and use the revised system anyway. So I've got my tabs on here. And we simply have to poke this through. Okay, and then we'll simply tie each one of these on with a couple of overhand knots. And the idea here is you want to try and keep them the same length. And I am just tying it here um, so that it's taut against the disc without collapsing it. Okay, so there's my little knot there. And kind of like what we do with the shock cord, you probably want to put just a little tiny dab of glue on that to keep it from coming loose. Cotton doesn't have that much of a problem, but this is a feels like a polyester or maybe even a nylon blend. And it doesn't grab to itself as well.
Okay, so that's the first loop, and then I'm going to go ahead and continue the other two loops off camera. Now, I noticed I made a small mistake in the order of things. Uh, according to the instructions, we should have tied the parachute to the nose cone before tying it to the shock cord. Uh, and the reason I ended up doing this is because I never tie the parachute to the nose cone. Um, I always use a snap swivel. But I will show you a way to do this anyway. Okay, so first go ahead and gather up the loops of our parachute here. And then I'm going to hold the parachute in the middle of the sheet at one end and then I have the the loops here wrapped around my finger at the other and now I'm just going to to move the, the loops a little bit um, until we make sure that all of the corners are pretty much aligned there and they are so then what I'll do is pinch the shroud lines together here to make a loop Okay, and if you want to do the, the permanent attachment here, then you'll take that loop of loops, pass it through the eyelet, there we go, okay, and what, if we hadn't put the shock cord on already, um, then you would simply pass the nose cone through this loop and pull it taut. Um, the other way to do it, and you'll see this on a lot of Estes kits, is you take your loops in one hand here and you pass the entire parachute through. Always hang on to one end of those loops so they stay the right length. Okay, and then you can pull that down. Here, I'm not going to do it completely. Uh, but then you pull this down taut and then put a little dab of glue on that to keep it from moving. Now, that said, um, I don't recommend currently attaching parachutes to any rocket. Okay? Um, what I prefer to do is get a snap swivel like this. You can get these in sporting goods stores and department stores and even some convenience stores in the fishing section. And what we'll do now is we'll gather up the loops just like we did earlier. Like this. All right. Once more, making their sure they're close to being the same length. All right. And I'm going to gather it into a small set of the loops here. Okay. And I'm going to pass these through the swivel side. So there's a, an eyelet here on the snap swivel itself. All right. This is not the snap side. Don't pass it through this side here. Okay. And then open that up just enough. And then we're going to pass the entire snap swivel through those loops, bring them down to the bottom, and then pull them snug. Okay, and then go back and make sure that we're still at a reasonably uniform length. Okay, there's a little bit of um, limp, limp, not limp, uh, limped uh, shroud lines there, um, but it's not enough to worry about. Okay, if you do need to reposition them, you simply loosen this knot a little bit and pull on the appropriate uh, shroud lines. Once you have this where you want it, though, go ahead and glue that knot in place. With just a little dab of wider wood glue. Doesn't take much. Uh, and this just keeps it from creeping up around the top and coming loose again. Okay, and then what you can do after the glue dries. Um, is attach this to the nose. So you simply open up the snap part, put it around, and close it back up again. And this is really the part you'll need to watch for when you're getting your snap swivel. Um, you need one that will be big enough to fit the eyelet of your nose cone. And this one is just on the borderline there, which is making it hard for me to close. There we go. Okay, um, the swivel itself, any size will be fine for most model rockets. The, this part's really strong, uh, even in the small ones. Um, it's the, sna the snap part that itself that some nose cones will need a bigger one 
here in order for it to fit properly. As I said, the one I've got here is just barely big enough, but it works. Uh, what this does, though, is in addition to allowing you to change out your parachute or store the parachute outside of the rocket, um, as this is coming down, there's almost always a little bit of an imbalance, and this causes the parachute to start twisting on its way down. Okay? And as that happens, it starts wrapping the lines around itself, um, and that starts to collapse the parachute, making it less efficient. Having this swivel then allows that to turn freely, and theoretically at least, you get less of that supercoiling of the parachute shrouds. Okay. And then also, maybe you got a windy day and you want a smaller parachute, or maybe you want to trade it out for a streamer, or you don't like to store your parachutes in your rockets and prefer to keep them separate, then you simply come in here and pop this back off and put it away. Okay, our last part will be to put the decals on, and so I'm going to go ahead and take my snap swivel back off. As I do so, have a little bit of wet glue there on the knots. Okay, and now we've got some self adhesive decals here. And you can use these to make it look like the package, or you can um, rearrange them however you like. The first thing you want to do, though, is go wash your hands thoroughly so you, have, you minimize the fingerprints that you transfer to this. All right, I washed my hands. I've also grabbed a pair of fine point tweezers here. And so we've got this set of three bands. I'm not sure if these are pre-perforated. They do not appear to be. Yep. Okay, so we need to cut these out first. And you can use scissors or you can use your hobby knife here. Um, I'm actually going to use my hobby knife because I can get a straighter line with that. So I'm going to cut this right at the edge of the black so that on the rocket, I'll put this right at the edge of the body tube and it will blend directly to the nose cone. Okay. Um, the area on the bottom here, I can go ahead and leave as clear. And then I'm going to cut off all but just, oops, in there, all but just a little bit of the white space here. I'll leave a little bit in case I need a, an overlap. I don't know exactly how this is going to go on. Okay. Same thing here. Okay, and now this is just a matter of peeling this. And if you try and touch it only in the black area, you won't transfer any visible fingerprints. And the key to this is to be very gentle with it at first. Because it's really going to want to stick. And I was going to leave this open, but I think I'm going to go ahead and put the nose on. Just to get the shock cord out of the way. Okay, what I'm, I'm going to leave the nose on, but I'm not going to scrunch it down yet. Um, and what I'm aiming for is just a very, very tiny amount extending beyond the edge of the body tube. It's only like half a millimeter. I'm keeping this kind of taut, but I'm not really putting a lot of pressure on the decal itself yet. Uh, so that makes it easier for me to move if I need to. Okay, I'm not quite meeting up there. So I can 
gently peel this back out. Oh, that's all right. Can't peel much more on there. Okay, so I was trying to avoid it lifting like that. Um, sometimes the, the adhesive on these is just such that um, it tends to stick to everything. Um, now with heavier vinyl decals, you may have seen where they'll use a little bit of soapy water to lubricate the, the decals here and allow you better um, liftability. The problem is you need to have a well-sealed rocket to do that. So this has to have a really good paint job so water does not get down in it. And where this is pre-colored paper, it does not do that. So you can't use that trick here. You just waterlog your rocket. So the best you can do is try to be very light with your touch. And then um, try and hit your, your target the first try. Alright, so now I'm going to cut out these two razor decals. Right, and the hardest part is going to be taking the part here at the edges. Like this. Okay, so according to our uh, illustration here, these are going down the sides. Um, it looks like about midway along the um, launch lug here. Now, if, you, if this is not your first model rocket, you probably are wondering, should you put fillets in with the launch lug? Um, and part of that's going to be depending on how well you glued it in there. Um, and also how you want this to look. So I would recommend if you want to put a fillet in here, use white glue, not wood glue. Because uh, the white glue will, will dry more or less colorless and translucent, um, which will be less noticeable than if you have the yellow wood glue in there. Although, that's not too bad given it's a yellow rocket as well. Okay, but you can come back to that. Here, and I'm just going to separate these. Okay, and I'm going to put one in line with this fin. And I'm going to use my launch lug as a sort of a guide here so I can get this as straight as possible. Now, here I'm just touching that on to see how close I am. That looks reasonably close to straight. So now I'll just gently push toward the edges. Okay, and then I can use a firmer pressure here to remove the air bubbles. Okay, and now I'll flip this around. Okay, and now this will be my guide. So I'm going to put it in line with this tube fin. And once again here I'll use the launch lug as kind of a straight line guide. So I want this about there. Um, yeah, well, it's a little bit up. Let's see if I have, it'll let me release it. There we go. Now, I'm going to go ahead and go with that. It's a little bit lower than I wanted, but it's feeling like it's gripping too hard now. Now I just put my nose cone all the way down there. Check the stripes once more. Okay, that looks good. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the razor. Uh, this will launch on standard A through C black powders and theoretically D uh, size composite motors. Uh, hope you have a 
great launch, a safe recovery, and please stay tuned to more of my videos.